born hunter, evangelist with a mission, demonstrating signs and wonders decently in order by the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking the truth in revival, piercing the innermost being. Now let's take you live to a revival meeting where you will be moved from one level of glory to another. This whole revelation about Isaiah 52, 7, how beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. And then we talked about Romans 15, 7, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. Amen. So I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. For just as the body is a unity and yet has many parts, and all the parts, though many, form only one body. And, he, and so it is with Christ. I don't know who's doing the scripture verse. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Now, I am reading from Amplified, but uh, and are the body. So also is, what does it say? Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Who sees that? Now, I can see you looking at it, but I know the way I teach is like, it's sometimes so deep I need, I need brains to catch up with me right now. Are you ready? I need all the brain waves in this place working. I can tell because I'm about to tell you something. Remember we moved from Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful are the feet of him. To Romans 15, 7. How beautiful are the feet of them. So we're talking about us being one with him. He's the head. We are the what? The body. He is the vine, we are the branch. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. If we abide in him, his words what? Abide in us. We are one with him. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of the body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So what's he saying? Christ is what? Many bodies. Is Christ divided? No, Christ is not divided. He is one body. Hallelujah. Did Christ conquer death? Yes. Are we born again of a resurrected order? Yes. Isn't that right? Are we in covenant relationship with an immortal, resurrected man? Yes. As he is, so are what? We in this world. How is he? He is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. As he is, so are we. How is he? Is he sick? Has he got a problem? Is he struggling? No. He is ruling and reigning. As he is, so are we. Amen. Does he have any eye problems, feet problems? No. Okay. So I'm trying to make clear a picture I want to ex ex explain to you. For just as one body, amen, has many parts, amen. You say, why is that important? Because sometimes what we do, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, we exalt certain parts of the body. We have done this before through history. Sometimes we've exalted the prophet's part of the body, the eye. Sometimes we've exalted the apostolic. Sometimes we've exalted famous preachers. We've exalted the, the, the flamboyant, excited vocal cords. But, you know, we don't talk much about the feet. Because one thing I realized about the feet is weaker parts, we need the weaker parts. People want to be, how can I say, they love the public. People love parts that can be seen by the public. Some people like the public parts. But then there's private parts. And there's some parts of the body that are invisible. If any part of the body suffers, the whole body feels it. If we stump our toe, we know it. Amen. 
Hallelujah. So every part is important. Let me carry on with verse 13. For by means of personal agency of one Holy Spirit, we were all, whether Jews or Greek, we've all been baptized, united together in one body, and all made to drink from one Holy Spirit. Verse 13. We all made to drink from what? One Holy Spirit. For by one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether we're Jew or Gentile, bond or free. That means slave or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now we know there are many ministers who do not manifest the nature of this verse. In many arenas, military, politically, socially, they do not manifest the nature of being baptized into one body. I am African American. Just the statement African American to me violates 1 Corinthians 12, 13. That's for my black preacher friends who say they're African American. <laughs> because I've got a South African passport and I have an American passport, so that makes me what? African American. But am I black? No. So once again, they're not understanding. You've got to learn to understand you're neither male nor female, slave nor free. It's got nothing to do about color. We've all been baptized into Christ. That's explaining Galatians, Colossians, we're all one in Christ. We need to learn to speak from the place of the Spirit. Amen. Yes. Not project ourselves into certain groups. I am this group. I am that group. I'm a Paul. I'm of Apostle. I'm of the African Americans. Who really cares? Are you drinking into one spirit? Are you baptized into one body? Are you part of the same family? Family talks, family conversation. We are of Christ. I am of the body of Christ. I am one with Him. I am complete in Him. I'm not complete. In my class, my social group, my political agenda. I'm not complete in a Democrat, Republican, whatever, Libertarian. I'm not complete in any social platform, slave, free. I'm only complete in Christ. So, I wrote down here, we have stinky feet. Because we're not releasing the fragrance of Christ, and we're going to talk about that. I'm going to do a message on Sunday called Anointed Feet, but I didn't want to deal with that right now because we got more of an attitude, feet with an attitude. We have feet with an attitude, and you can see it in the body of Christ. It is voiced. Feet with an attitude. But feet are important because they carry, they, they are what is, I wrote you, mobility for divine purpose. We need the feet. The feet is what carried the glory of God. Feet carry the body to the finish line, to the finish. The word is a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto our path. Remember verse 14. For the body does not consist of one limp or organ, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, verse 15, I do not belong to the body, would it be therefore not a part of the body? Now we don't say it like that today. We just say, I'm Episcopalian, I'm Lutheran, I'm Catholic, I'm Baptist. I'm word of faith. I'm charismatic. I'm of the apostolic. <laughs> so we don't we we saying that in a sense in this verse. Look at it very carefully. We're just not part of your group. We have our group. Who's with me? 
We're of the new order. We're of the reformation order. You know, we're of something. Who's with me? But boy, do we like social groups. Man, are we attracted to trying to find a place to belong. Not realizing all along you belong to Christ. And you really don't need to belong to anybody because you belong to him. <laughs> Good preaching, Warren. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I wrote down you another thing about the feet. The feet is a faceless generation. When you run a race, nobody's looking at the runner's feet. They see his face on the video camera coming through the, the runner's line. But we're not looking at the guy. How does his feet look right now? Let's examine the feet. We're just going to focus the video camera down on this racer's feet. We're not going to look at the way his arms move or look at his face. But when you see his face, you'll be like... Remember, he's watching the intensity in his face. Yes! And sometimes he'll stick his, you know, face, you know, to get his face ahead of everybody. Be like, you know, to come through the finish line. Who's with me? Just like a baby coming out. See my face. Not everybody's a face. <laughs> so we're talking about a faceless generation. Thousands of people cast out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead in the streets. And they have no name. And you know what's so interesting is the feet don't complain about carrying the body. I mean, I can have an arm and I can pick up my Bible and I don't know what it's like holding anything for a long time. And after a while, like, I almost start feeling the pain and everything. Like, oh boy. And I'll go, oh, that's heavy. But it's, just, it's me. You know but do you notice the feet never ever said anything about it? I noticed something about the feet. They don't complain about carrying the body. <laughs> you know he's there when your ankle is sprained. Look at Psalms chapter 37 and verse 23. Because I want to talk about death is defeated. It's under your feet. Psalms 37 verse 23. Psalms 37, the steps of a good man, ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man. So what about a wicked man? Well, they're not ordered by the Lord. They're not ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's why Jesus just washed their feet. You don't need anything washed. I just want to remove the dust. I want to remove the flesh. I want to remove the inaccuracies. I want to remove all the dirt off your feet. Amen. I thought about it. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. Enoch what? Walked with God <laughs> and was not, for God took him. Look at Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 12. Habakkuk 1.12. Amen. Habakkuk 1.12. Habakkuk 1.12 says, We shall not all die. I believe it's Habakkuk 1.12, if I remember the... Yeah. Are you not, O Lord, from everlasting, everlasting? Jehovah my God, my Holy One, we shall not die we shall not die this truth is absolute and final but how can this truth come about how can this truth really come about i'm going to read this in two versions for you i don't know if we have amplified but i'm going to take this from the amplified i really marked it this way first corinthians chapter 15 and i want to bring this out very carefully first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians 15 and I'm going to go to verse 25. And I'm going to read this to you from the Amplified because, so we can clarify certain things here. Of course, and I might just double check it here. For Christ, 
And I want to change something here, verse 25. For he must reign. Now I'm going to read this from Amplified. For Christ must be king and reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. Now we're talking to Psalms 110 verse 1. If you want to know the corresponding verse where that comes from. Psalms 110 verse 1. Okay, watch this. For Christ, I'm going to change it just slightly already. For he, Christ, in his glorious body. For he, Christ, in his, his, for he must reign. How's he going to reign? How's he reigning? He's reigning through you and me. The kingdom of God is within us. His rule and reign is manifesting through us. He's given us, them, authority and power over all the works of the enemy. So where's the ruling and reigning? In the body, in his feet. We stomp the enemy under our feet. Amen. For he, Christ, his glorious body, must reign till he, God the Father, till he, God the Father, till he, God the Father, so you can make sure you get that right, for he, God the Father, has put all enemies under his, his, who's his? Christ's feet. Okay, go back with me to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 25. For Christ in his glorious body must reign till he, God the Father, have put all enemies, all enemies under his, Christ's feet. Who's Christ's feet? We are. Now. We need to know this. We need to realize that we're going to walk out immortality. I did a series that's on Sprecher. It's called Walking Out Immortality. Walking Out Immortality. Not just being... You know, we can talk about immortality, but when we talk about this part, we're talking about walking out immortality. Are you with me? We're talking about walking out immortality. That means talking it, walking it out. Hallelujah. Amen. The lost enemy, where are we at? Verse 26. The lost enemy to be seduced and abolished is death. The lost enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he, I'm making sure I get this right. For he, the Father, God, saith all things are put under him. Verse 27. For he, the Father, has put all things in subjection under his, Christ's feet. Are you with me? He's put all things under what? For he, God the Father, put all things under his, Christ, the Son of Man's feet. For he put all things in subjection under his, who? Christ, the Son of Man's feet. Where's the corresponding verse? Hebrews 2.8. Hold your place there. We'll come back to putting all things under his feet. Hebrews 2.8. Let's connect the dots very carefully. Because people don't connect the dots, so they don't get the revelation. Thou didst put all things in subjection under his feet. Amen. Let me, let me double check this. Hebrews 2, verse 8. For you have put everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to man... To man, he left nothing outside of man's control, but at present we do not yet see all, we do not yet, we do not yet, we do not yet see all things subjected to him, man. That was 2,000 years ago. I read it out of Amplified. That was 2,000 years ago. I'm reading it out of Amplified because I'm trying to explain, thou just put all things at your section feet. That's not the whole of verse 8. Amen. Whatever translation is, that's not the whole verse. 
Hallelujah. You might put another one up. Amen. Because you need it. Let me read this again in Amplified because I don't want anybody missing it. Don't get it here. You're not going to, you got to, this, I'm telling you, when we do it with accuracy of scripture, we need accuracy. What did I say? Hebrews 2.8. Isn't that right? Hebrews 2.8. Let me read it again to you from Amplified so you can see it very carefully. Hebrews 2.8. I wish I had this up here, but I cannot. For you have put everything in subjection under his feet. Amen. For in that he put all in subjection under him. All in subjection under who? Him. Christ. Under what? Christ. He left nothing. Did he say nothing? That is not put under him. So we know that everything's put under the head knows it's done. The head knows it's done. The eye at that point 2,000 years ago has not yet seen it. But God will do nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And in the last days, Isaiah 52 verse 8, the prophets, the watchmen see eye to eye because the feet are beautiful and they can see it. We will not die, he says. Isaiah 52 verse 8, the prophets will see it. And they got to see it and declare it. I can see it's possible. I can see gray hair becoming dark again. I can see aging reverse. I, I can see miracles happening like that again. Amen. But if we cannot see it, we won't be able to produce it. Hmm. Okay. Where am I at? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 25, 26. I said, what? 27. 27. For he, God, hath put all things under Christ, the Son of Man's feet. But when God said, all things are put under him, Christ, it is manifested that he, God, is accepted, which did put all things under him, the Christ. And he himself is accepted, who does the subjecting of all things to him, unto him. What are we quoting? Psalms 8, 6. Amen. Psalms 8, 6. Remember Psalms 8, 6? He has put all, watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Psalms chapter 8. And verse 6, thou makest him have dominion over the works of the hands, and thou hast put all things under, who's his? His feet. Who are his feet? We are his feet. You've got to move yourself in the place of we, them, it's us. And we need to do it now. We need to do it now. We need to do it now. We need to, oh, the stats, the latest, the, the thing that I saw today that came out of Africa, the latest stats, when the birth rate in France is 1.3 children per family, 1.4, 1.5, like this across the whole of Europe. London has grown several million immigrants. The average Muslim family in France is 8. Point, what's it? 8.4, 8. Yeah, 8.3 children per family. By the stats show statistically. The French people's kids are 1.3 and the Muslims are 8.4. No, 1. 1. Point some, 1.3 or 4 was the French. And yeah, Muslims, 8.3. So they're saying by 2027, there'll be five Muslims in France for every French person. Five to one. By 2034, they will dominate the nation of France as a Muslim country. Because they have children and multiply. We've got a bunch of Christians bickering and fighting over their selfishness, realizing the Muslims just are multiplying. They don't even have to do much. They just keep having a lot of kids, and we've got Christians who can't stand having children, 
don't want children, no wonder they just want to get into lesbianism, homosexuality, all the stupidity we have going on which shrinks the population and allows the Muslims just to keep multiplying without even getting anybody saved or even preaching. They just multiply and take over. Because we're too selfish to have children. Isn't that the truth? I mean, you know, I mean, we don't have to say it like it is, but this is just the reality of the facts on ground when it comes to dominion. First command he gave Adam and Eve was be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. And he says it over and over in Genesis. So homosexuality defies the first command God gave a male and a female. Multiply, fill the earth, be fruitful. That was the first thing God said to Adam and Eve. Was to multiply. You cannot multiply. You cannot even obey the first directive of God in a homosexual lesbian relationship. You can't even obey the first directive. Who's with me? I mean, these are all part of dominion. So look what he says. Go back with me now to verse 28. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 28. However, when everything is subject to him, 1 Corinthians, where am I at? What did I say? 15 verse 28. Yeah. When all things shall be subdued unto him, Christ the Son, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, God the Father, and put all things unto him, the Son, the Christ, that God may be all in all. Now, I do not know why we struggle to interpret these verses as understanding that death is under our feet. So God declared that not only is death defeated by his son and be put under his feet, so really the people living here on earth now clearly must manifest victory over death. Clearly are showed that we can manifest victory over death. You know, it's one thing for a young man or woman who has not yet come to full maturity to declare that they have overcome death and to claim divine health in their body. But let me tell you one thing that's very important. We will see aging process clearly reversed. Amen. The process will be reversed. And I can give you scripture after scripture for that as well. The sun moved backwards with Hezekiah. When I had that experience... Of in that dream all night long with God, and I've preached on that, I saw literally when it was finished, he was like 10, 15 years younger, Hezekiah, after the clock moved backwards. I believe that, that gray hair can regain its life and color. You know, the strong man of a house is, can be bound in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. He can be bound in a moment. But it takes a while to, care, to spoil his house, to carry out his furniture, install new furniture, and manifest victory in all areas for everyone to see. The Bible says this corruptible must put on incorruptible. This mortal must put on immortality. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 3, 4, and 5. Why does creation groan? Creation groans waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not that I want to be unclothed. Who's with me? But I want to be further clothed, the robes of righteousness, so that mortality may be swallowed up by life. This is what happens when you, t when you step in dominion. Hallelujah. Go with me to the third chapter of Joshua. Joshua. Chapter 3 and verse 11. Let me break this down, just this little part, one more thing slowly, dealing with uh, dominion. And you're going to get a revelation there, which I thought is, I love this revelation. I love this revelation. Are you ready? Joshua chapter 3. I know I, I must have marked this. Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. Are you ready? Verse 11. Watch this. Oh. I like this. This is so cool because it's the, it's, it's the way it described it. <laughs> so, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is passing over before you into Jordan. I tell you what, let's go to verse 10 for a second, ready? 
verse 10. Somebody with me? Verse 10. Hallelujah. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is among you, and he will without fail drive out, come on the enemy before you, basically. Verse 11, ready? Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord is with you. I'll just go with this for a second. Passes over you into the Jordan. The ark represents Christ. Verse 12. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel for every tribe of men. If you, if you watch this carefully, yeah, the order is set up. Apostles' doctrine, fellowship, 12, breaking of bread. I mean, it's like the whole process is always this. is always going to run. But look at verse 13. Ready? I love this stuff. And it shall come to pass when the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of Jehovah, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest on the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off. Even the waters that come down from above shall stand in one heap. I, I don't know if I'm if I, I'll try to read this fine writing here. The city... Now, oh, okay, wait a second. Let me do this verse. What was that? Verse 13? Re okay, ready, 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 ready. Verse 13. So when the people set out from the tents to pass over Jordan with the priests, bring up the Ark of the Covenant before the people. Huh? I'm going to find this. Stand up on a heap, ready? Verse 15. And when those, verse 15, and when they bear the Ark, were come up into the Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the ark are dipped in the brink of the water, for Jordan overflowed all its bank at the time of harvest. So this time, Jordan was at its max. You're at its highest place. Now you said that's interesting. Why? Because Jordan, remember, represents death. Amen? Death and burial. Jordan is where Jesus, now remember this, Okay, wait, let me, let me not get to that yet. Ready? Let me explain this. Verse 16. This is too cool. Ready? Verse 16. Then the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in a heap and a great way off at Adam. <laughs> so I looked up. Okay. The city of Adam has been placed 16 miles up the river from Jericho. It seems probably a stretch of about 20 to 30 miles of riverbed was left dry. The interesting parallel of the event is that some people say something happened upstream. Now, the city of Adam, remember, this was a representative of the fact of, some people believe this is where Adam first began his journey. The original place when Adam, you understand, Eden, and then this is, this is like saying the way Adam started. You understand? So it's almost like saying that the water is rolled back all the way. Who's with me? To Adam. Is that what it says? Yeah. Yeah. On dry ground. The people passed over, and while the Israelites passed over, verse 17, on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan until all the nations finished passing over Jordan. What's so funny down here is it actually says that in other writings, I wrote this, I saw, this is Jordan, blah, 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 blah. I don't know where she gets this from. F. Davidson, uh, this is Joyce Meyer's research, basically saying that it dried up for like 10 days or something like that. This took a while. Who's with me? They gave them time to get across. <laughs> and they're on dry ground. Hallelujah. Until all the people passed clean over Jordan. What a day. The waters were rolled clear back to Adam. Rolled back until the feet of those who bear the ark of God. His glory and his presence were dipped into the Jordan and came to rest on dry ground. Now we know that the river Jordan, like I said, is symbolic of death. Jesus was baptized here, showing the death, the burial as a resurrection. So there's no way to enter into the fullness of the inheritance until the river had been conquered. 
Do you understand? They couldn't enter into the fullness of their inheritance until the river had been conquered. All the way back to where Adam began. What happened when Adam, Adam sinned and they fell short of the glory? And this is talking about restoring the glory. What did Adam have before he sinned? Immortality. So the water is rolled all the way back to Adam. Oh, somebody coming, you know, saying, you got to look, you got to look here carefully, you got to see. You understand? It goes all the way back to Adam. <laughs> Ready? They did not cross Jordan at Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, like to partake of the first fruits like they did before. We do not have to die completely to self to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and partake of the first fruits of the Spirit. Oh, let me make a statement. Are you ready? We do not have to die completely to self to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and partake of the fruit, first fruits of the Spirit. We do not have to die. We do not have to die completely to self, to the self-life. To get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The, while Peter preached, the Holy Spirit fell on Cornelius' household. Do you think after all of Cornelius' household talked in tongues that they walked out of that experience? Yes, you know their lives impact, but do you think they all walked out instantly holy? Instantly? Yes, they've been made righteous. We just shared the example this morning about Philip preaching. And Simon the sorcerer, he believed and was baptized in water. That represents death to self. He could have been baptized in the Jordan River before we know it. Come on. And believe Philip. But my God, when Peter and John came and the Holy Spirit came and he saw through the laying of hands the power of the Holy Spirit, he wanted to buy it. So something in Simon the sorcerer's heart was not totally right. Do you think that you have to be perfect and be totally dead to self? No, let me say it again. You do not have to die completely to the self-life to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, partake of the first fruits of the Spirit. But Jordan represents death. Death to selflessness. Death to self-righteousness. Death to self-security. Death to, how can I say, self-protection. Self-reliance, self-centeredness. See, there's a key right there. To come into the land promised, death to self, a defeat of, when we do this, there will be a defeat of natural death. There has to be a priesthood. We are kings and priests unto God. There's got to be a people whose feet is washed, whose feet are holy, whose feet can cross on dry ground and can enter in the fullness of the inheritance that God has for us. This is a glorious body that have glorious feet. They are connected to the order of Melchizedek and have better promises. Hallelujah. Something very powerful Something very powerful is happening. I just believe I said a whole lot. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to make this real slow. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop at this point. But what I'm trying to do is <laughs> Enoch walked and talked with God. Boy, he, 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 he broke that realm, hey. The fallen realm could not hold him. <laughs> that guy walked out immortality. He walked into immortality. My God. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. I've died. And my life is hidden with Christ in God. I'm completing him. That we can have holy feet. Take off your sandals for you on holy ground. Amen. That's why we're seeking for glory, honor, and immortality. That's much better. We will not die. 
Let's receive that life. Thank you for all the immortality is going to manifest. We declare it manifest in your feet. We declare there is a feet people, a feet generation, a feet company, feet believers who can, who can literally in Christ in you crush and seal this thing once and for all, put all things under his feet, Christ's feet. We are Christ's feet and all enemies are being put and deaths being put under our feet. Hallelujah. I decree it. Amen. I decree it. Come on, let's just thank God. Father, we just thank you for the life of God. We thank you for your goodness. If you're watching this, you need to take time. Go get an Amplified Bible. Listen to this message again, please. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. You've got to get this in your system. We have uh, messages, I believe, on Sprecher called Grace for Life and Faith for Life. And all these will help you as well when it comes to the area of immortality. Living out immortality. Yeah.